Jeff Hickman, if you would like to introduce yourself to the Star Wars Guild Republic sure. community. Sure, sure. Because people haven't seen you before much. Uh, they, we do know that you, you were a live producer before, but um, mm -hmm. um, the first we really heard of you was when you made the announcement about free play. Right. If you could tell us about your work, previous work, sure. what's your future role in my work. Sure, absolutely. And so I'm Jeff Hickman. I'm currently the executive producer on SWOTOR. Um, my background, I've been in the MMO gaming industry since 2001. My first game was Dark Age of Camelot. Um, so I, I w worked on Dark Age from the time it launched. Joined, joined Mythic about six months before Dark Age's launch. Um, helped to launch that game. Um, eventually in 2004 became the executive producer of Dark Age of Camelot. Um, I was also the executive producer on Warhammer Online. So that was my game. Um, and then about two years ago, so for 13 years, I've spent my time building, launching, and running MMOs. That's what I do. Big MMOs. Big MMOs. Um, so about two years ago, and of course, this was at Mythic Entertainment. Um, and Mythic in 2006 became part of Electronic Arts. And in 2008 became part of the Bioware team within Electronic Arts. So in 2010, after we launched Warhammer Online, um, Ray and Greg came to me and said, hey, we're getting, we're getting ready to launch SWOTOR. You're the guy who's launched probably more MMOs than most people on the planet. Um, we'd love your help. Would you like to come down and help us launch SWOTOR? And I said, sure, sounds good. I'll move to Austin. I love Austin. Um, so I moved to Austin and I became the executive producer of live services. So what that means is I was basically responsible for anything not development related. So that's customer support, it's live production, which is the guys who monitor the live servers, who patch the live servers, who take care of um, emergency issues, that kind of stuff. Um, responsible for the community team. I was also deeply involved with marketing, operations, platform, and with dev to a point. I basically sat, my partner was Rich Vogel, and I literally sat in an office with him, this far away from him. Um, and between he and I, we made the decisions for the launch of the product and, and uh, what, what Tor was going to become. Um, Rich has since moved on. He's uh, you know, looking at different things for his future. And um, they've rolled up. So I'm still responsible for all of the things in live services. And then they've also rolled up the development team underneath me. I've, I've got ex uh, you know, 14 years of experience doing both. So um, it's an awesome opportunity and a super big honor for me. You know, I'm working with guys who quite literally are my heroes in the gaming space. You talk about James Olin and, and um, <coughs> having your first interview with James back in 2010. Well, James Olin, I grew up playing Baldur's Gate and, and uh, KOTOR and, you know, other, other games that were my beloved games before I even got in the industry back in the 90s. And um, James was the, was the guy on those games. And now James Olin sits three feet away from me. He's my creative director on tour. This is his game, you know. And, God, what an honor it is to um, have this opportunity. Yeah, it is a, yet it is a big um, responsibility as well. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because um, uh, you are actually in charge of making free-to-play a reality. Absolutely. Because that's how I gather it, because... That was your first announcement. So I gather that's what your, what your task is, specifically. So what's your plan? How do you plan on accomplishing this? Yeah, a lot of hard work. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think you hit it on the head. Well, while I have broad responsibilities across the development team, you know, James is still the creative director. He's the one who decides um, what the game is, the vision of the game. This is a James Olin product, if you will. Um, and so he's still deeply, deeply involved in that. I help to make the decisions around um, a, a lot of the business aspects of the game. Um, James and I work very closely together to make sure that the things that he wants to do with the game make sense from a business standpoint, make sense within the, the uh, kind of holistic structure of the game. And so the free-to-play and MTX piece is still both he and I, and, and the entire team of course, a, a giant team behind this, um, looking at what are the right decisions for taking this game free-to-play. What modifications do we make to the game? What does a free-to-play player experience when he plays the game? What does a subscriber experience when he plays the game? Um, what are the different things that we need to do 
to keep our players engaged and how can we change the way that we've done things in the past to um, provide more frequent content updates, to um, give the free-to-play player a great experience yet entice them to pay a little bit here and there. Like, this is all about business. So um, we want a great game experience that people will love for years and years to come. So, uh, you know, what my actual plans are, um, do the right thing for both our subscribers and a free-to-play player, do it as quickly as possible in a very high-quality manner, and provide um, a great play experience for both. Since we're talking about as uh, quickly as possible, is November the month? What have we said? Yeah, fall. That, that's what was said. Fall is, fall is what we're aiming for. It's all we've said so far. At, at, the, at the investor's call, yeah, November. Said, November was, yeah, fall. Was but you're still, yeah, okay, yeah. so you're broadening broad that. Yeah. Is that. Does that mean sooner or later? <laughs> <laughs> um, as soon as it's done at the right level of quality is when we're going to launch that thing. And we think that we can hit the fall. Um, you've announced several new content. Mm -hmm. New war zones, new raid. Um, is that content played, uh, planned before free-to-play launches or after? So are we going to get the bench of high brigades? Um, they're not dependent on each other. Mm -hmm. So if you're a subscriber... It doesn't, it doesn't matter. As a subscriber, you get all of that stuff. As a free-to-play player, it almost doesn't matter either. Because as a free-to-play player, the restrictions you have... So, for example, one of the restrictions we will have is we will have a restriction on free-to-play players about how many war zones they can play in a given amount of time. So, when we put out Ancient Hypergates, um, if you're a free-to-play player, you will have that restriction. So... If you're currently a, a subscriber, which is the only kind of players that we have, you're going to get no matter what. I mean, it's, so it doesn't, we, have, we don't really look at it that way. We're going to, we have a track, uh, a team of people that are working on those monthly content updates or those six week content, content updates. And um, those people, while integrated deeply with what we're thinking about for free to play, they are not dependent on it. And so we're going to f do that as fast as we possibly can because we believe strongly that the players want to see more frequent content updates. And then we're also going to do the free-to-play piece as fast as we can also. But again, both of those things are all about, it's all about Bioware quality. We're not going to launch any of these things before they're ready to go. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we have, I think, really strong plans around both right now. Okay. Um, there are, you answer, answered a lot of questions about the free-to-play model that you're going to be providing, but um, there's still um, some small things that we, we would like to find out about. Sure. Um, do subscribers ever have to pay for any content? So, like, before, while well, it was just a subscriber game, you would pay for a, for an extension, uh, expansion, sure, for a big expansion, yep, for example. Uh, but uh, right now, I'm, I'm guessing that you're. Um, are you focusing more on smaller content? Yes. Packages. Cur currently, we are. Currently, but it, uh, you know. Um, so, what are subscribers? What do subscribers have to look for yeah. in the future when the yeah. free-to-play model goes? I, I, I wish I had a great solid answer for you on that um, we're still in discussion about some of the um, larger content updates that we're planning so a great example is the planet McKeb we've talked about McKeb um, we have we have a, we have a lot of plans around McKeb and I, I wish I could give you more detail we're not talking about some of the detail but I can tell you that I think that the player base is going to be really really pleased more story content new and interesting things for the players to do um, more systems and interesting functions in the game can't go into a lot of detail but it around things like that this is a pretty big piece and while I don't it's probably all I can say, um, I, I, but it, I can tell you this. It's definitely still up for discussion of whether we sell that to the subscriber or whether the subscriber gets that for free because it is a big, beefy chunk of content. Okay. Uh, McKeb is going to expand the level. Okay. I can't talk about that right now. <laughs> because that She's, she'll kill me. <laughs> that was my answer. I'm sorry. That's, that's what was said before that McKeb is going to raise the level cap. It's all right. Still under, still under still development. development. Okay. Um, 
I think you guys will be very happy with what we have planned. Okay, that's good. Um, the one question I have personally uh, is um, how do you change a story MMO into a cash shop MMO? Because Ooh. you're kind of introducing a cash shop into a story MMO. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a, there's definitely a process there. If you if you want to talk about it. Oh, I'd love to. I, I think I think the core of that is actually fairly simple to explain, though it might be more difficult to implement. Um, if you look at what we're planning on doing, the thing that we're giving away for free is the story. We we talked a lot about and really did, a, did months of deep investigation on what are the restrictions that a free to play player has in the game, and there was a lot of people who were saying, "Oh, you've got to restrict the story." You know, it's it's the story is what it's all about, and and, there, and therefore you have to restrict it. We actually believe the opposite. Um, we think that the story is so core to the um, to the gameplay experience, the the the, the love and and um, wonder of what Star Wars is, that breaking up the story in some in some sort of way, it's just not the right thing to do. We want that kind of that casual player to come in and kind of start to play with the story and get drawn into what they're doing. And we're willing to give that away for free because there's so many other things outside of that that you can do that as a subscriber you will get just for being a subscriber or as a free-to-play player you can buy out of kind of in an a la carte, you know, here's a menu of things. You want more bank slots? Okay. You want to play War, War Zones more often? Okay. You know, whatever, whatever it happens to be. Um, and so, you know, for us, like, that's kind of the core of it. It's like, give the story away. Make the casual player understand what that is. Don't try to monetize that. Monetize all the things around that. And I think, actually, as we looked through it, it's not as, um, it's not as I don't want to say hard, it's not as uh, a complex as you'd think it is. It is very difficult. <laughs> Believe me, the team is really working hard. They are uh, working day and night trying to get this done. Um, but it is pretty straightforward to understand. Once we laid it out on paper, we all went, huh, that actually makes perfect sense. And uh, we feel really good about it. Okay, uh, uh, the major question about free-to-play, mm -hmm. when any free-to-play project is announced or talked about, is what's going to be in the cash shop? Yeah. And that's, um, let's, let's just put this question out there as plain and as simple as possible. Sure. Uh, what's your stance on pay to win? Ooh. So, pay to win is not something that we like. Um, I don't want to unbalance the game by putting things on the store that somebody can walk in on day one, buy, and be, be the winner. Having said that, um, there will be some things that we put on the store that are um, that, that do enhance power value in some way, but not at the top end. So it's um, trying to think of a good example. We may put um, a medium-level blue, let's say, piece of armor on the cash store. Like, we might do that. We, still, we haven't decided. We're still talking about this. But it's one of those things that's like um, most players will have something better than this anyway. But if you don't, here's a way that you can get a, a leg up to at least make you equal with the normal players. So that's kind of where our thinking is at. But we're still discussing it. But we do not believe in pay to win. As a, as a concept. Correct. That's a very important I question. agree, one hundred percent. I have to ask you this question. It's a it's a really strange thing to have been said uh, just a couple of days ago. The, the new uh, general manager, Matt Bromberg. And multiple 50 plus space battles. Yeah. What does 50 plus stand for? Uh, I, so, what, that's a great question. It, it's probably not the. It, it's that's one way of saying what we meant. So, they're hard mode space battles, is what they are. They're they're the space missions for players who are level 50, who have done all the space missions, who have a super upgraded ship, and now want a big challenge. And I can tell you, they are a big challenge. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you answered this already, but I, I just want to pass this on to you, as this is a community question, and I think it's important for me to relate what community asks. I do too. What meet fast. And the number one question was, what's going to happen with our story? So why we have the epilogue yep. screen right now for months, some people have it, and uh, they just want to see what happens with their companions and what, what's going to happen with their So story. do I. <laughs> I've seen some of it actually because we do believe in story and, and we have plans for story moving forward. Um, Makeb is Makeb is probably the biggest example of that. Makeb is a continuation of your story. Okay, well, that's the nice question. Why the space missions and not Makeb? Um, I think they're the easiest way to say this is they're actually two di very different teams working on these things. We, we literally have a team um, called called Team Catalyst is what they're called internally, that is responsible for um, these frequent content updates. So their team, this team is responsible for war zones and flashpoints and some operations and some of the events. Like this is the team that's dedicated to doing interesting frequent content updates. We also have a space team. Like we have a team that that's all they do is space. Um, and they've been working on these hard mode space missions for months now. Um, and then we have another team that is working on Makeb. And so these, these three teams, while they work closely together, they're not, they're not dependent upon each other. And when one is finished with, that, with whatever they're working on, that's when we launch it. And so Makeb is on its own timeline and its own track. And so it's not a matter of us choosing between the two. It's a matter of which one's done first. So that's, that's it. One last question. So I've been following the game for a very long time. There was one marketing story that we heard all that time. That was, um, uh, this is a subscription game, a plan to make a subscription game. We know how that went. We've seen the past six months. We're at a new point of Star Wars Guild Republic. And uh, going forward, you are, you are going to be leading that new, new, uh, new push Correct. for Star Wars Guild Republic. What are, in your words, Tell us about the future of Tor. Wow. I think the, the future of Tor is about bringing in, lowering the barriers to people coming who would like to play the game but aren't ready to commit to $15 a month or um, who are willing to wait for three, four months for a big content update. Like, lowering the barriers to, to get into the game and stay in the game I think is probably the number one piece of the future that I'm focused on. Um, free to play is a part of that because I think that you know money is a, is a barrier to a lot of people, um, and so I look at the focus on free to play, the focus on more frequent content updates, yet a continued commitment to things like story, and that is the future of Tor for me. It's a future where we have more people playing than we've ever had before, where we have. Um, a wide variety of options about how you want to play. So it's like, play the way you want to. Pay for the things you want to pay for. Um, enjoy the game you want, the way you want to enjoy it. That's the future of tour.